Hey what's up guys my name is Pravindu from PNP Tutorials and you are watching the PNP Tutorials channel and in this video we are basically going to make a NAS device. So NAS is again stand for the network storage device. So what is basically a NAS? NAS actually works as a storage device in a network. Say for example I have a Wi-Fi and I have connected my NAS device to my Wi-Fi then that NAS device that is storage device will be accessible from my PC laptop as well as from my mobile phone as well. So if you want to just have an extra storage device then NAS is really helpful in that case. So we are basically going to make the use of Raspberry Pi 4 in order to make the NAS storage device and I also have 2 terabyte of external hard drive that I will connect with the Raspberry Pi 4. So Raspberry Pi 4 actually have the two USB 3.0 ports and along with that it also have 1000 Mbps of gigabit ethernet which will help me to give more amount of uh, reading and writing speed uh, as compared to the Raspberry Pi 3 and since we will be connecting the external hard drive with the USB 3.0 that's why the reading and writing speed will also be more than the Raspberry Pi 3 and that is the reason I am using the Raspberry Pi 4 for making this video. Now what we will have to do here is we will have to download the Raspberry Pi OS. I am using Raspberry Pi OS with the desktop version because I want to use my Raspberry Pi as a desktop as well. So I've just downloaded the torrent and after that what you will have to do is you will have to just uh, flash this operating system into the SD card. For now I'm using 64 gigabyte of SD card but 8 gigabyte of SD card will also be more than sufficient. From here you can just select the file that you have downloaded. In my case I have downloaded this file so I'm gonna select this and from here you will be able to select your SD card and after that you will have to just click on the flash button. Once the flashing process is done then simply insert your SD card into your Raspberry Pi 4 and after that you need to plug in the hard drive that you want to make as a NAS device and apart from that you also have to plug in the LAN cable to your Raspberry Pi and after that what we will have to do is to just look for the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. So here you can see guys this is my router configuration page and the IP address of my Raspberry Pi is 192.168.1.21. Now if you are using Windows 10 then what you will have to do is you will have to just type in here SSH Pi at the rate 192.168.1.21 that will just connect the SSH connection to the Raspberry Pi. So just type in here yes and simply tap in the password of the Raspberry Pi and that is Raspberry. Now here we go here we have the Raspberry Pi console. Now what we will have to do here is we'll have to do some configuration in order to make it a network storage device. So here I have few commands. Let me just quickly show you. So here you can see we have to follow these commands. In order to follow this command what we will have to do is we'll simply just open this one file using the sudo in the nano editor and just give the path of that file. Now this is the new file that we are going to create. Now if you see here these hashes are used here as a comment box. So mainly we want to just copy this repository into this file. So simply paste that repository, press Ctrl X together and then Y and then hit enter. That will just create one uh, repository list. Now let's copy all these four commands. So what these command will do is it will simply export the language and the Debian front end and APT list change in changes and apart from that it will also download a keyring file that is archive keyring.asc. So I'm just going to copy this command and paste it into my terminal. Now let's finally just update all the repositories. After successful upgrade what we will have to do here is we will simply copy this command and we will paste in here. Now let's hit enter. It will install the open media vault into the Raspberry Pi. Now it will take some time as it needs to download 55 MB of data. Now 
now as you can see open media vault has been installed successfully now we need to just enable the configurations uh, for that simply just copy this command and paste in here this will populate the open media vault db and after that we need to see the login information and for checking the login information we will simply open this file now as you can see we have this as our IP address and username is admin and password is open media vault so now what I'm gonna do here is I'll simply open up my browser and here I will enter 192.168.1.21 which is the IP address of the open media vault and there we go we have got the username here and username was admin and password is open media vault hit enter now once you're logged in into the open media vault what you will have to do here is you need to go into the storage and then the file system and then you need to find out the drive that you have connected for now i have connected wd elements that is of two terabyte of drive so this is the drive that i have connected after that you need to just click on mount and as soon as you will click on the mount you will be able to see the available and the used space and the mounted will be indicated as yes so after that what you will have to do here is you need to create a shared folder so just go into the access right management and then click on the shared folder so i'm just going to name it as demo share and then i will select the drive drive is wd elements and now i will give the permission as everyone read and write now i'll just click on save now we have two shared folder here one is the demo shared folder and another one is shared folder itself so i'll just click on this apply and then click on yes so this thing will apply the configurations to open media vault and after that what we will have to do here is we need to go into the smb cifs then we need to click on this settings and after that we need to enable this setting and after enabling this setting click on this save button don't forget to click on this save button because if you won't uh, click on this save button after enabling the general settings you won't be able to see your raspberry pi inside the network now just click on this shares and from here you need to click on add now from here what i'm gonna do here is i'll just click on the drop down now i want to share the demo share folder so i will select that and click on public tab now from here i'll just click on only guest by only guest i am just telling the open media world that you don't need to use any sort of credentials to be accessed by the users on the network now i'll just click on the save and after clicking on the save button our configuration changes would be reflected here but we need to click on apply button in order to just save these changes and as soon as we will save these changes our sharing folder should be available to the windows drive so i'm just gonna tell you how you can access this sharing folder from the windows drive so right now my windows pc and my raspberry pi both are into the same network I'll just go into my Windows PC and then I'll click on this PC and inside the network you will be able to see the Raspberry Pi as well. Now if you're not able to see the Raspberry Pi here then you need to enable the sharing options and that you can do it by just going into the network and sharing center and then click on advanced sharing settings and then click on turn on discovery network discovery and then click on turn on file and sharing center once you will click on these things then you will have to just click on save changes once you will make these changes then your raspberry pi would be available under the network so now you can just click on the raspberry pi and here you can specify the username and the password your username of the raspberry pi is pi and the password is raspberry hit enter now you will be able to see two folders here one is the demo share and another one is the shared folder so now you if you want to just copy any file into the demo share then i can quickly do it as well so i'll just copy this ubuntu file into the demo share and let's notice the copying speed here let's paste this file and here you can see guys we are able to get around 30 mbps and that is megabyte per second that is a nice speed to have and right now i'm using wd elements 2 terabyte hard drive that is connected to the usb 3.0 port of raspberry pi 4 so that's a nice speed uh, to have over the network 
So that was everything for the video. I hope you guys like this video. If you guys like this video, then give it a big thumbs up. If you are new to this channel, then don't forget to subscribe for more upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.